You know, globally, we see a number of initiatives popping up, and so they can vary both from country to country as well as within a single country, depending on the driving force behind the funding and also the diseases that are being studied. I think the common thread that we're seeing across all these initiatives really is fundamentally the idea of stimulation. So precision medicine is not new in some sense, but really the stimulation is this idea of scaling and expanding the principles of precision medicine so that more disease types can be studied, more insight can be gained, and more people can benefit from those programs. So what we really see is this idea that regardless of the country, regardless of the system, the funding mechanism behind it, really the key is can you take a program and grow it? And that becomes a sustainability issue as well. Can you take a program and the initial funding that comes behind it and create a program that benefits a large number of people for years and years to come? So, you know, in terms of precision medicine genetic sequencing, there are a number of vendors out there doing a really good job in terms of getting good sequence data at an increasingly affordable rate. So really where we see the importance and in innovation is around analysis and utilization of the data that comes out for having done those sequences. And so in that sense, we're really seeing innovation take the form of scale. It's the ability to get increasingly larger volumes of data, not only sequencing more people, but understanding more information about those people who have been sequenced so that we can get deeper and richer insights into those individuals, understanding more about both their genetic makeup as well as their clinical conditions, and even their behavioral and environmental factors that can weigh into the impact of their genes and their overall lives. And that also goes along with the idea of having more and more people, more sequences about more people, more patient records, more data so that we can scale the in insights, scale the innovation so that we get more opportunity to impact more lives as we go. So right now, a major challenge is really the idea of getting person-centric information. And so a lot of people have done great work in terms of genetic sequencing, and they're just beginning to try to correlate that genetic data with their clinical data, in essence trying to pair genotypic and phenotypic data. But where they continue to struggle is the ability to not only get those data types together in one place, but to organize high quality data and continue to scale different types of data into the mix. So that as they continue to grow, continue to do their analysis, continue to generate new tools that generate new insight, they can get reliable, high quality results that come out of that data. So we really see people struggling with the idea of not only generating data, but organizing it in a high quality, highly useful way so that they can enrich the insights they're generating off of it. So IT plays an important role, first in capturing data and organizing that data, but then really in the highest value part of all this, which is converting that data into useful information, useful insight. And so really for IT, the, the first step, the place they provide the most value in the near term is providing that environment to organize data, preserve quality, preserve reproducibility, but then where there's opportunity for innovation is in building new tools, helping create new reporting mechanisms, incorporating new applications on top of that data repository so that they can really start to drive value for their clinicians and their researchers, and ultimately for the patients that those people serve in order to make that information actionable, in order to use things like machine learning and artificial intelligence, use capabilities that are now infiltrating across technology in a healthcare environment so that we can make more of the data than what it is purely as data alone. It's an interesting question in terms of how precision medicine can impact lives. You know, I'll give you an example from my experience. So I'm an infectious diseases specialist, did a lot of work with HIV. The principles of precision medicine have been utilized in HIV for a long time in terms of sequencing a virus, understanding what's the best option for a complex treatment regimen for those individuals, and then as they go through their lives, tailoring that regimen over time to ensure that we continue to have the optimal treatment regimen for that person. I think those same principles hold true across all different disease types. So whether it's hereditary disease, whether it's an acute acquired disease, a cancer, whatever it is, really it's that insight into the individual, all the different factors that impact a person's disease, but also impact their individual lives. 
you know, what are the factors that not only can help us treat disease, but ultimately prevent disease, or when we know disease is inevitable, help prepare that individual for chronic illness rather than acute life-threatening illness. So really, I think precision medicine has the potential to impact every life in some way around the world. And again, that's really the key in terms of bringing that innovation out to the masses. It's being able to bring these principles out to more people, more disease types, more countries, more environments, and really that's the promise that it holds. In incorporating precision medicine in the future really is about decision making and tools that support decision making. So there's an enormous amount of medical literature out there and it's only gonna grow. And all these very specific insights that are generated for a particular disease state or a particular population, it's tough for clinicians to keep up with all that information, and it's tough for them to know which information is the right information to apply to a given person or a given scenario. So I think really in the long term, decision support tools that sit on top of high quality data in such a way that they can generate, not only generating insight, but generating reliable insight where clinicians trust the data underlying it and therefore trust the insight that's been generated. That's really critical, I think, in the long term, incorporating these tools into physician workflow, shared workflows with patients so that patients and clinicians can collaborate in terms of understanding the best treatment options. I think that's really where you start to see precision medicine seeping into everyday medicine, where you really just, you eliminate the precision and it just becomes medicine. All right, thank you.